In this video, I want to share with you how the painting What If happened, kind of by accident, with maybe a little planning thrown in. Once I had the idea of using various elements from previous paintings, I took it to the computer and made a collage, kind of laying it out at the size I wanted my final painting to be, and just modifying bits and pieces here and there. I gotta share with you, I was very uncomfortable at the thought of approaching this painting. So to help me get over that, that discomfort and to keep it from becoming a hurdle and a block, I uh, put a grid over it and then use that to transfer it to, at first, a piece of newsprint with just some vine charcoal. And then eventually, you know, once I saw that would work and I was okay with proceeding, I used the same grid and transferred it to uh, pastel paper, a sanded paper. Once those lines were there, there was nothing else to do but get started. So I started laying down some pinks and fuchsias and this very deep coordinating color. I'm not even sure what to call it. Why did I choose pink? I don't know. Uh, other than I was just throwing caution completely to the wind and it, it just caught my eye first thing. Now that I've got this pink mess and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I thought, well, let's just throw some color on it and get some blues and a little bit for the flower and then start getting my face. And it's at this point that uh, the what ifs really start happening. Uh, the first one being, well, what if my portrait is really monochrome? Um, as an artist, I often feel colorless on the outside and that all of my color goes into my art and not me. And now the next what if, as I'm looking for ways for these different elements to kind of uh, uh, communicate with each other or kind of uh, affect each other, I thought, what if that upper flower butterfly wing was transparent so that you could see some of the background coming through? So I went back to the computer and uh, played with that a little bit so that I could get a better idea of where I was going. All right, now that I can see where I was going, I went in and started adjusting the transparency look of that wing and playing with elements to look like they, they live together, a little strand of hair, the leaf, but uh, I really wasn't happy with either one of those. So I ended up scrubbing out the leaf and changing the hair so that I was a little happier with it. Here I started feeling a little more comfortable. I was uh, generating a little momentum uh, creatively. That lower bit of the flower I started making look more like a butterfly wing. You see the little kind of swallowtail little bit on it there. Um, getting the pencil to look like it's going over the leaf and then had the idea of making the leaf look like it's over the lower part of my face. But on the upper part, it kind of switches, so kind of playing with uh, layers there and the effects. And then the top of the leaf, where it starts looking like tree branches, playing with a rainbow there, so it's like I'm peeking out under it. And the what-ifs continue, bringing that water in front of my chin, in front of the lower part of the butterfly flower, and working on those reflections. So again, there's just more ways for them to interact with each other. Oh, and there's one more what if in here. The What were holes in the upper right hand leaf, I turned into water droplets on top of the leaf. At this point, it was just a matter of refining and getting all those details to a point where I was happy with them. And here I'm calling it done, but there's one more thing I wanna show you. At the very beginning when laying out my painting, I looked for a way to organize the elements around the golden spiral, the Fibonacci spiral, whatever you want to call that, so that it kind of leaves the eye. I've found that in just about every reference photo or layout that really catches my attention, I can find the spiral there. Um, I'm not always able to uh, emphasize it as much as I did here, but I do look for it every time, and I really think it helps come up with a more compelling layout to my art. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed uh, following me along on the journey of how this piece happened and getting a, a better look inside my creative process. If you have any questions, uh, please send me an email 
Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, leave me a comment down below. If you're watching on Patreon, you can leave me a comment there. I will leave links down below to more information about this piece on my website, as well as other ways to support and follow my art if you're interested. Thanks again.